Hello everybody, welcome to the new video of Jane's Pizza Shop. So today, um, or in this video, not only today, I will install the hydraulic suspension part uh, for the back of the S124, just like I did on the front. If you did not see the video about the front hydraulic suspension, is uh, a few videos back um, in the S124 VI Turbo project. If you look in the right corner, if you see my logo, you can click on there, see in the other playlist the installation of the front suspension. Um, if you're new to the channel, have a look on yeinspeedshop.com, the link is over here. You can also find all the videos about this project over there and my other projects and review videos I did. So, what is the case with this with this car about the suspension? I have different than normally you have like SLS suspension, so self-leveling suspension in the back in a station wagon that's standard. When you load up the car, it will raise it up till the level you want it so that's a level you can adjust a little bit so you can have a lower or a higher adjustment so what i have done i have in the front also self-leveling suspension um, that is i'm trying it so i never uh, drove with this and w124 or w201 it does not exist so these shock absorbers are from an r129 uh, they have an option on all the models except the SL600 that's standard to have uh, self-leveling suspension all around so what this system do is going to do in my car is I can have two settings one and two and then I can adjust those two settings and I can switch in between so okay, I can have an, a standard base setting and a spot setting and I can adjust these and that's how I'm going to adjust the oil that is flowing in and out of the shock absorber and that's how you get like a sort of spot of suspension and I can also lower it so I have uh, that there is a spring uh, accumulator in here that works on hydrogen pressure and then you have of course the normal uh, spring that's then a softer one than originally so that's also why you have problems with these kind of suspension that is laying flat, flat on the ground because it's just an, the spring that's helping the system so I'm going to raise the car I'm going to show you where I'm going to install everything. So this part you will not find in an uh, RM29 or W201 or 124. That's what I, I built in here. So at first what I already did, I already uh, changed some angles in the exhaust because I had some fitment issues because I don't have a flex pipe in this exhaust because the engine is very uh, hard on the suspension uh, uh, strut of how you say it, uh, on the engine mount so it's not really needed but then the exhaust needs to be perfect so because it's here there is a uh, support it can uh, um, be longer because it will stress the stainless steel and also I changed some angles in here and now it's a little bit tight in the back here but it's I, I I'm going to change a little bit on this uh, heat shield and then the back is now straight I also removed the trailer uh, coupling bar in here because the trailer coupling I had was an, an, a trailer coupling that you could get off the car and I have to cut a hole in the bumper to keep it so um, yeah with a station wagon you really want to have a tow coupling on I think it makes the car more functional so I'm going to do something with that I'm not sure what but uh, if I have one that I can bolt on with four bolts that's also no problem but I have to I don't want to cut in the bumper and I want to able to take it off so I'm have to have a look into that but yeah this exhaust is fully stainless steel and is pretty straight so it will uh, when it heats up it will get longer so and there is a way so it it, it has mo uh, room to move so that's not really a problem i'm going to make an extra hang point in here this is the original also so i have to weld it on but i will do that because it also needs to be off the car because i'm going to use heat resistant uh how you say that the band that you uh, do around the exhaust i just want to keep as much heat in the exhaust as possible so also from here I'm going to do it, the mufflers I'm not going to do, but the rest of the pipe I'm going to do so there is not a lot of heat around the uh, fuel system and that sort of stuff. So for the space for the hydraulic suspension, um, yeah, two spring 
balls are in the car the accumulators are in here so they have an outlet uh, this outlet is original also connected to this hose and then there is nothing in between normally so uh, this hose is normally going straight to the inlet of this bulb and the other hose that's over here is normally going straight into here I'm going to put the 6-2 valve in between I will get it I'm going to mount it like here and then the actuator can go in between so I'm going to make a bracket that will be mounted on the bottom here and then this will be in position and then I have the connections on the top so the two front ones are in the bottom of the of the screen are from the feet to the accumulators and the two top ones are the return and feet so they will be mounted like this somewhere in here sorry somewhere in here so I'm going to make a bracket show you the next clip when I got the bracket on so, so let's go uh, bracket or plate I want to call it this in place four bolts bolt to the bottom small spaces in between so I have a little bit more room on the top um, so it's mounted on here this is I got another one that I will put on so this is just for a mock-up but it's the same so I positioned the bracket on the stabilizer bar a little bit it, it's going to be painted or, or a, new, a new one I have to have a look but this is good to see if everything works so the subframe will never come down this much that it will hit the actuator so there's enough space in here so this is all good I had a look what was the maximum amount of travel that's in there so the highest point of this it will never uh, get here because I will never pump it up like this but uh, the setting from the actuator is now like the middle setting so I can adjust it in or out so I can raise it and lower it so I adjusted it now if it's on the wheels uh, when it's getting center I have about four to five centimeters play above the above the tire to the wheel arch four or five centimeters and I can then afterwards adjust it it's just the base setting at the same in the front and then afterwards I can uh, adjust the brackets here on the stabilizer bar and in the front it looks different that I just have this rod that I can uh, screw in or out or make a little bit shorter or longer so um, yeah so this system that's on my front stabilizer bar this is just an original part a little bit modified here but it's an original part from an R129 so uh, that's how they also have it factory wise from here it's all custom this is my own uh, design upwards so that's it I'm going to have a look at the hydraulic lines and I think I'm going to first put the lines in from uh, I think I have I'm going to remove these lines the old hydraulic lines and then have a look how I get to the valve and then yeah go from there so let's go the block was already mounted in the last video also this so I mounted the valves in between so as you can see that four valves they running from um, from the accumulator so these two ports are going to the accumulators that are over here and over there and these two are adjustment for like sport setting comfort setting for that side that's over that will go to this position so i have to find out what i'm going to do with it i think i'm going to run a line for example from here in here and then it will come out somewhere here i hope and then from here i want to run a hose to the suspension I can turn these 180 degrees so I have the outlet here and then have a look if I can run a hose until this point because it needs to be flexible because the shock moves a little bit like this when it's uh, the shock absorber going in or out so I have to have a look how I'm going to do that but these are very old and uh, need to be changed 
from the other point we'll go from here a little bit upwards and I run it underneath over it and then do on this side the same thing also going to do the same thing with this shop so it looks nice and symmetrical I think so uh, they are all now on the softer setting this is like softer setting and then when I turn them in it gets harder or softer so and then I can switch in between for example which channel I want so the back channels are one or two and the other channel is now on this point and that will be this connection uh, yeah this connection will be connected to here and uh, yeah and then you got these two these two ports these is like P1 and P2 and uh, yeah that's how it works so these three ports on the front one this is the outlet and it can switch between these ports and this is the outlet can switch in between these ports so that's how you regulate then the oil that's coming from the accumulator to the shock absorber that determines how much oil it will get and that's how your suspension getting harder or softer that's uh, like the original uh, how it also works in the do in the iron 26s or uh, iron 29s but then it was into a valve block then there was a restrictor valve in it and uh, these settings are called yeah it's ads adaptive adaptive suspension something like that I think it was ADS. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to run these lines and have a look how I'm going to connect it and I will show you an update. Got the old lines removed. So now I've got a banyo uh, bolt in it. And then I uh, lifted up the suspension so the wheel completely upwards. So I have a look if it's uh, running free and it will not touch. So this will never touch the axle uh, it's not going that high otherwise you're already with your wheels in the wheel well and you're in the end shock, uh, end shock rubbers that are in here so it will never hit um, I have to massage this metal a little bit inwards I already did a little bit because otherwise this hose will hit it now we're going to rub it like, like here so this angle is good to do for this hose so that will be pretty good um, it needs to be a little bit flexible because if the suspension is moving inwards it will move a little sorry a little bit on here not too much so it cannot be a hard line originally it's also on uh, this side there's a soft line going in here and then the hard line is going in uh, yeah because my system is completely different I thought it was easier to run a line from here so I have now a line here that's the outlet of uh, the passenger side setting so single line so that you can choose this or this valve depends on what you choose going upwards on there to the line and uh, I have to put some clamps on it to support it you can see there is a pin maybe you can see it or maybe not but there is a pin and I can screw uh, so yeah there are from the original plastic caps with holders where normally the brake lines are on it's now a little bit painted but when I paint it off you get like these kinds of screws so I have to order some small clips for it some I will use some stout blocks that are called in the hydraulic world people know what it is a stout block is like a clamp around the line and you can just mount it but yeah in there I cannot mount them because I cannot reach it and I have to drop the complete uh, rear end I don't want to do it so there has to be only one line installed that's this one on the bottom that will be installed like this so it will be in here uh, I have to get the uh, li some lines I have to get off the suspension of, of the bottom and I also have to remove the handbrake cables otherwise you cannot get this one in because it will go from here and run there's another connection that I can mount it and then another one over there you can see it over there and it will be on this side you can see the white point that's my measuring point it will end there and then the hose will be connected to this position and then it's all in I also have to massage this piece of metal a little bit inwards and then I recoat it everything that I damaged and then everything will be perfect and then the only thing I need to do is uh, support all the lines and then uh, yeah 
the hydraulic part in between the suspension for the different settings is uh, then done. So I'm going to put that line in and then I can show you the end result. I'm done. This side I already showed you. That's all in. Line is going to this point. This line is going upwards. That was a line that I need to put in. And it's over here. It's now mounted. So I have to do some little modifications to these points. Or maybe get a hose with like a 30 degree angle that's a little bit like this. I have to have a look into that. I can fold this a little bit around and then I get a little bit more room. And more room to play. Let's have a look how I'm uh, going to do this. But yeah, let's have a look. So the only thing that I need to do is put the clamps in. Uh, you can see there's a point over there. There's another point over there that I can use. So it's all in now. Um, everything is connected. So I've got adjustments spot setting, comfort setting all the way around and spot setting, comfort setting the way around and then the felt that switches uh, from P1 to P2 and then the oil is going from the accumulator to the valve and then the valve you can choose which way the oil will flow to the shock absorber over there and over there um, so this is part one, I'm going to make a part two because I still need to connect the leveling valve to the accumulator, one side, so these two positions, sorry, two positions on the front will feed uh, the oil in and out of the accumulator, the same on there where the yellow plug is. And then there are two connections on here and that will go over here and then will be rooted in one of these connections completely to the front and will be feeding up to the front of the engine. So, <coughs> on front of the engine there will be a uh, flow divider installed. So the flow will then, because I have only one pump and the flow coming out of the pump needs to be divided in two equal flows one to the front and one to the back and why is that because if I have for example the front is level and uh, the oil will then flow over the return with no pressure so it was just pressureless flowing uh, through the pump and then flew through the level valve back to the tank. If you want to use oil in the back, for example, I dropped 200 kilos in the back, it will drop and wants to pump up the front, it will lose all the pressure through the level valve that's in the front. There is no need for pumping up the system. So you want to have then the flow divided and still have pressurized flow in the back so I can pump up the level in the back. That's the whole deal with that. So in the next video I'm going to install that part and then uh, connect everything and then yeah mechanically that is then the last part that I needed to do. This is the, the biggest part I think from this suspension setting and then later on uh, it needs to be all adjusted when uh, the car is drivable and then I will uh, show more about how I think this system works. So thanks for watching if you've got any questions about the subject yeah, speedshop.com is over here, also in the right corner for you, there's my logo. You can click on it and see all the other videos about this project. And don't forget to subscribe, put the bell on, because you don't get any notifications anymore from YouTube if you don't have the bell on. So, hope you do that. Thanks for watching, any questions just leave, let me know. Thanks, bye bye.